So now in this video we're going to take a quick look at the uh, double pull, double throw, non-latching relay component right here. And generally don't uh, buy these if you're interested in relays. There's relay modules that work uh, much better. But uh, this will help you understand what the relay module is doing. So in any case, the uh, packaging on here, this came from a Make Electronics kit. Uh, they label them. It says you can go 240 volts alternating current. That's only alternating current and that's dangerous. Don't do that anyways up to uh, 5 amps. 12 volts is used to switch it. And when you look at the relay itself it should give you the uh, voltages and currents you can work with. So it says uh, 240 volts alternating. That's uh, an alternating current sign. Up to 5 amps. Of course very dangerous. Never do that. And uh, 30 volts. Uh, direct current or on off current. And uh, so usually you'll probably be working with direct current. Again 5 amps. They usually put the uh, voltage for the coil right there. So that's to switch it on or off. It's a direct current of uh, 12 volts. Now when it comes to wiring it up, we're just gonna look at the coil right now. It's the single pair down here. That is the coil. That's what we're gonna run the uh, current through at 12 volts to uh, turn it on or off. These are uh, middle pins up here. So each side is independent there. The middle pin is the common side of the switch. Sometimes, when there's no current going through it's connected to either uh, the one down there or the one up there I can't remember but in any case it's connected to them when there is no current flowing through when you put current through it disconnects from one side and connects to the other side so we'll do a test to see uh, which exactly that is but for now we're just going to uh, take this and uh, plug it into the breadboard make sure just the coil part make sure it comes across to that the pin going to the negative supply here we have the power supply there so these tend to need a bit of current for their coils. I wasn't sure exactly what I needed. I just put it to uh, 200 milliamps there, 0.2 amps. But in any case, you're gonna hear a click when I connect power. You can see the current went up, so it switched. And when I release it, it switches back. So that's a mechanical switch. There's actually moving parts in there to switch it on or off, so that wears down. Uh, quicker than semiconductor uh, versions, but usually you can handle more current and they're cheaper. So now we added a little bit more. First off, we got a diode down here, might be a little hard to see, so we'll cover it first. Anode over there to the negative supply, and then cathode, the gray band, right there to where we apply the uh, positive power. And so right now, current will not flow through the diode, it's reverse bias, it's flowing through the coil. But when I release, current or voltage I should say from the coil it doesn't want to stop moving current and uh, so it will move it through the diode right there instead of creating a spark or something and uh, so maybe you can get away with that without that maybe you can't but it's a good idea to put it there we're not dealing with a lot of current but in any case we also have a load up here so the LED is on and uh, actually we'll uh, zoom back right there you can see that current is the LED. None of that current is the uh, relay other than it's moving from the uh, middle pin. We'll uh, pop this out here. As I said before that's the common pin and uh, right now this is a normally closed position right there. So when I plug it uh, back in that middle pin is going to the resistor and uh, then two spots down we got the long lead the anode of the LED short lead the cathode going to ground and it is on right now. So that's the normally closed position. And so when we turn the uh, relay coil on right there, now you can see it turns off. So now I shuffled things around just a little bit. I moved the LED up there. So we got the long lead up there, the anode short lead, the cathode. We got going down there because between these two pins, we have a uh, couple rows. We got to go up. So now I'm going to uh, plug this back in like I did before so middle pin there is going to the resistor now the top pin is going to the long lead the anode there and you can see that the LED is off instead of on so this is the normally open position right there it's off now we're going to uh, switch it and you can see that uh, the LED turned on so now we have the current going through the coil plus the 10 milliamps of current going through the LED. So we got about 10 milliamps of current more than what the coil needs that the power supply is providing. 
And now we're going to look at the other side of the relay. So again, we got the long lead, the anode, above the short lead, the cathode 4, the LED over here. But we just have one resistor over there. So we're going to show that uh, these are independently switched right there. That's what the double pole means. So make sure that's plugged in uh, pretty well. And I uh, will zoom back to look at the current. And you'll see that uh, when I switch it, it's the same current and everything only one LED lights up that one does not light up that's because the double pole means that there's one switching pole over there and one switching pole over there they're independent of each other so I need to power each of them independently but the relay will uh, switch them at the same time right there and now I put another LED different color this time let's say things are good we got a green light for whatever uh, reason so long lead the anode again short lead the cathode just like I had the red LED down there before and so that's gonna light up that's the normally close spot until we uh, make the switch right there and you can see the red LEDs come on and uh, we will look at the currents now so right now that's the current of the green LED and uh, the resistor, resistor going through it green LEDs are naturally brighter so it'd be better to put uh, directly to positive supply where the resistor is and use uh, different resistors but that would be crowded so I didn't do that but uh, any case because you could use a higher value resistor for the green LED so it's not as bright these are 1000 ohm resistors by the way but in any case we could have it where you know uh, green means things are good or whatever maybe something goes wrong so you send current through the coil to switch it and maybe instead of an LED you got a fan or something maybe something's getting too hot and that'll turn the fan on because this can handle uh, quite a bit of current up to uh, 5 amps right there we could use a completely different power supply power fan cool something down or whatnot there's unlimited options I'm just doing some demonstrations for uh, this video so you can see we got the coil right now when it comes to current plus the two red LEDs their currents are adding up as far as this power supply is concerned but again, you can use completely different power supply being switched from what is uh, switching it right there. So you don't have to use 12 volts for the load. We're just keeping things simple here. You build up on the uh, simple stuff, but the simple stuff is easier to understand. So hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.